That became clear to me early in my career, when I was supposed to perform with Nas at a concert in Central Park. Getting the share of stage with him was a big deal to me. As a superstar coming out of Queens, Nas was someone I really looked up to. When I got to the venue, Nas was already there, and it looked like he brought all of Queensbridge with him. There must have been a couple dozen guys from Queensbridge standing backstage, drinking, smoking, and hyping themselves up for Nas' set. I realized they didn't know what to do with the energy they were creating. It was like they were starting a fire they couldn't contain. Sure enough, they started fighting with each other. It was Queensbridge versus Queensbridge. Even though his crew was turning on itself, Nas was either unwilling or unable to put out the fire. Soon the cops got called, and the concert got shut down before Nas even stepped on stage. In my eyes, Nas had mishandled the moment. I understood why he brought so many guys from Queensbridge with him. Central Park is no man's land, and there's no telling who he might have ran into there. A crew from Brooklyn, a couple guys from the Bronx, or maybe a rival crew from another neighborhood in Queens. It was smart to make sure he was surrounded by his own people. What wasn't as strategic was the failure to keep them in check. By failing to control the energy he'd brought with him, he lost the chance to perform that day. It probably cost him money down the road, too. When promoters hear there was a problem at a high-profile venue like Central Park, it'll make them think twice about booking you. So while the impulse to bring Queensbridge with them was understandable, their presence came at the expense of his overall growth. Watching those Queensbridge dudes fight each other, I vowed to myself that when my crew and I hit the road, I would have zero tolerance for internal conflict. I knew that if I couldn't control my own people, there would be a pretty low ceiling to how high I could build my brand. Plus, I understood that there were no minor fights when you're living together on the road. Let's say two guys get into it over a girl. One of them ends up smacking the other in the face. Whoever got touched is going to feel humiliated long after the physical sting subsides. Every time he sees that other guy on the bus, backstage, in the hotel lobby, waiting for a plane, he's going to want to reassert himself. That sort of resentment can boil below the surface until it explodes. And the it's kind of deep how we end out. Hey, yo, them niggas that want to be before don't want no beat no more. Now that they know who I rap with. Fetch out, fetch out, fetch out. The nigga nod, the nigga nod. Yo, them niggas that want to be before don't want no beat no more. Queens bring, now Queens bring. Better sober up before y'all speak to me. Don't come at me high. Last rapper to raise his voice and me got jacked in the eye. Now if I say I'm gonna get you, I'ma get you on the strength of the M. From long range, I can hit you. You find out the niggas who with you ain't even with you. After the gym starts split you, you need an MD to stitch you. Peep how I use words to paint pictures. Peep how I got niggas with bodies asking me for 10 cents to go hit you. Look my name up in the law book. Curtis Jackson, known for creating action.